Now anybody that's watched this show knows we like using pre-mixed, pre-packaged concrete. Well, we're using a packaged concrete, the kind that you just add water to. You just want a nice bed of mud. I don't typically think about concrete and steel when it comes to restoring a home built in the 1880s. Uh, typically it's going to take six to eight bags per hole. Uh-oh. The trick is to uh, not make the bag part of the footing. We'll yeah. flatten out the concrete, cut the tubes off tomorrow, set our pins. Cement we're using is the same stuff we use for uh, all of our footings, little pads. It's all mixed together, you just got to add water. It's important to do your bells first because they're going to be bigger than the hole. Our holes were 12 inches, our bells were 18 inches. So we poured in three, four bags, let that set for a little bit, put our tubes in. These cubes of concrete created a solid base for our bridge buttons. I can see where this would be a real time saver if you're doing something like a fence. Perfect. <laughs> there it is. About 170 lineal feet of fence to do, three gates. 33 posts, 130 bags of concrete. Whew. And we're gonna leave it just a little bit below grade so we can grow some grass. Yep. They absolutely love working with this stuff. That dump. Hey, now we're adults and we're still making mud pies. Hey. <laughs> Another bag. Here we go, boys. Now this is a fast setting mix. It's great for fence posts, lamp posts, and something like a side because this sets up in 20 to 40 minutes. If you use kind of a sawing motion, it'll cut through a little quicker. We're actually using a mag float, and this just kind of works the cream to the top of our surface. Then you just want to take an edging tool and go right between your forms and your concrete. That's pretty much how you set a small slab like this. It's the same stuff we use in our do-it-yourself projects, and it works great with stone. When you look at the side of a wall, a lot of what you're looking at is the mortar, and if that starts to vary in color because you get too much sand or too much cement in one area versus another, it doesn't look great. This takes care of that problem for you. It's called a Type M, stronger than either Type N or S. It has the highest compressive strength. Oh, perfect. This is going to work well over a metal lath or over a concrete backer board like we have. Ready? Yep. And it has enough strength to support the granite without sagging. Getting onto our masonry, what we want to do is make sure we got nice, thick mud consistency. I'll show you how the whole thing works. Set that down, kind of balance it out. Then we want to create a little bit of a suction around the side. Get your rock set, tap it. This is uh, exactly the way the guys do it. Too thin, it's going to shift on you. Too thick, it won't work with you very well. So we'll put that up there. It's an art, so you really got to be careful on how you do things. And you can see how well that sticks. I mean, that really does create a nice suction. Uh, watching the mud, it's critical. Well, that's going to wrap us up for this episode. Well, next time we're on to something totally different. Hopefully you'll join us for that. And I'm Dean Johnson. And I'm Miriam Johnson. Thanks for watching.